Welcome to this month's edition of North Central Outdoors. I'm your host, Nathan Karch. Just want to give you an update on the 2017 deer season. Uh, we're we're kind of right now in the heart of it. Um, everything's being very productive. Uh, we have finally hit some cold weather where the deer are starting to move. Um, I know the, the hunters are really excited about that. Um, the rut is taking place. The, uh, the bucks are chasing the does. Um, it, it's been really, really good and, and now's a fantastic chance and opportunity for for you to chase that big buck that you may have gotten on trail camera or uh, you know he's just been having this pattern of being nocturnal uh, they're gonna start showing themselves during the day their their patterns are all thrown off now because the does are in heat and they're really they're really rutting so uh, they they have a one-track mind and they're not paying attention to anything um, so uh, in fact I, I went hunting last week and uh, I had a, a good opportunity at a, a large nine pointer and uh, I tried to get him to stop and give me a, a good broadside shot. I was literally yelling at him trying to get him to stop and he didn't pay attention to me and neither did the doe. So, um, you know, they, uh, they're they not paying any attention to you. You can kind of make, uh, you know, rookie mistakes and it, it not have any severe consequences. So uh, I encourage you uh, to, to go out right now. Um, like I said, they are moving due to the colder weather. So that's, uh, that's good. Uh, give you a, kind of a, a harvest report um, for uh, the 2017 season up until now. Um, we're, we're being pretty productive so far. Macon County is, is kind of on track to where they were last year and so is Trousdale County. Um, everybody else kind of in the Middle Tennessee region, especially in District 21, which this is the district we're in, uh, they're, uh, they're seeing some, some lower numbers than they did last year. And that could be due to the fact that we've just finally hit that cold snap. Um, could be other factors. Um, you, you know, uh, the, the EHD, I'm not sure how bad that affected some of the uh, other counties in Middle Tennessee. I know East Tennessee, it really affected a lot of the counties, so they, they might see some uh, lower numbers this year. Uh, but it, it could be a, a large number of factors. Um, less people hunting, less opportunities to hunt private land or get big deer leases and stuff like that. Um, but overall, statewide, we're seeing about 10,000 less deer at this point than we did last year harvested. Um, and that, that holds true. It's about two to 300 less on uh, in Jackson County, Davidson, um, Cheatham, Sumner, Smith, uh, all those counties, we're, we're seeing just a, a smaller decrease, but hopefully those numbers will bump up uh, due to uh, the rut and uh, this colder weather. Um, with that being said, rifle season is now in. Uh, please wear your, your orange. Remember, it's got to be 500 square inches of blaze orange clothing. Uh, you can get the, the camo pattern blaze orange, as long as it's blaze orange, it, you, you know, a lot of people want to have that kind of broken up pattern to them. So uh, just, just make sure you're doing that. Um, just because you're hunting private property and you think you may be the only person on that specific portion of land, uh, that's not always true. We, we get so many trespassing calls each and every year, um, each and every day for that matter, especially during this time of year. Um, so you know there may be somebody on your land that you don't know about. And just as a safety precaution, you wearing that orange clothing, uh, that's that's going to allow them to immediately see you and not mistake you for a deer. And I hope nobody ever has a situation like that. But uh, you can kind of take care of that by just wearing the clothing. I, I know a lot of people don't want to be trophy or huge beacons out and just, you know, being able to locate them. But uh, it's, it's there for safety reasons. Um, also, you know, land could have transferred ownership and, and people not known about it you know you might have had permission from one landowner at one point and it's since recently transferred ownership and you know you have people still hunting that same piece of land so uh, just just wear your orange and, and the 500 inches uh, we're not so much concerned about the measurements and the exact you know 500 inches just just wear your vest and a hat it, it, that's all it needs to consist of also people are still really hunting out of tree stands it's, it's very popular not too many people hunt on the ground anymore or stalk hunt but uh, now is a good time to stalk hunt uh, it's kind of like turkey hunting if you can locate uh, a, a deer that's chasing like I said before 
they've got a one track mind and they're not paying attention to you so you can make some mistakes and you can you can stalk them on the ground and get closer and, and uh, get a better shot so uh, do that but if you are sitting in a tree stand please please wear your safety harness we've gotten a number of uh, calls uh, reports of tree stand accidents and uh, it, it it's never a good thing you know broken bones and there's been many individuals that are paralyzed and we've even had a, a few deaths so if not for yourself please do it for your family and the people that love you because they want to see you come home uh, safe uh, each and after every hunt so please do that also um, with with rifle season coming in uh, on private lands that allows you to basically use whatever method you want that it that is legal uh, you can use archery equipment, muzzleloader, rifle, shotguns uh, with slugs, uh, not buckshot, but slugs. Uh, but you can use any of that equipment, handguns, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's all good to go during the rifle season. That being said, if you're hunting public lands, wildlife management areas, uh, you need to know what those specific regulations are for those, um, those areas. I know most of the wildlife management areas in Middle Tennessee you're not allowed to hunt with centerfire rifles, so be aware of that. Just just check uh, with the WMA regulations before you go out on your hunt. Um, Cheatham WMA is is one of the exceptions. They do allow rifle hunting, uh, but you you can hunt with a muzzleloader or uh, a slug gun, a shotgun with slugs. So uh, I, I know on Percy Priest, Old Hickory, Cordell Hole, things like that, you're allowed to uh, to hunt with muzzleloader and shotgun slugs. But, but not center fire rifles. So just make sure you're doing that. And also if you're hunting uh, WMA, please wear your orange again. I cannot stress that enough because there are so many people that hunt WMAs and they're going uh, in and out all day long. So you might have somebody walk in front of you. Uh, just we don't want to give them any reason uh, to mistake you for a uh, game animal. So please wear your orange. Also, um, we're, we're starting to get a lot of calls about spotlighting. Uh, and uh, just just a reminder spotlighting is illegal you, you can't spotlight for the purpose of locating wildlife if you own uh, a large farm and uh, you're doing it for um, locating livestock that, that may have gotten loose or out of fence that's fine if you are the landowner um, but again you, you can't locate wildlife especially deer um, and, and especially if you're in possession of a weapon so uh, just just don't do that err on the safe side and just don't do it um, the good thing about uh, the EHD now, uh, you're starting to see a lot of it in East Tennessee, and we had some cases here. Uh, it should be gone now. It should be totally gone uh, due to uh, the, the two big frosts that I'm aware of, maybe three. Um, it, it should be totally dead now, so hopefully we won't see that uh, again until maybe next year. It, it's always there. Um, it's just become more apparent with uh, social media and stuff like that. But it, it's always there in a small portion of the state. Um, East Tennessee got the, the short end of the stick this year. But um, if, if you want to, um, just if it's been affected on your property or you think it has, just kind of err on the safe side and, and maybe pass up a, a few uh, bucks, a few does, and let your population kind of um, reestablish there. But I, I would say you're you're fine. Um, but again, that that biting midge that causes the EHD uh, should be dead, and um, that is is not to be mistaken with blue tongue. That is a, a totally different uh, disease. And we don't we don't have that. We've not seen that. But in EHD, they do have blue tongue. So um, just just be aware of that. Also, um, please. If you have any illegal activity in your area, please, please report it to us. Um, you are our eyes. We, we only have you know a number of officers per county, and we can't be everywhere at once. So we rely heavily on the public for information. Uh, you are our greatest resource. So please report any illegal activity, spotlighting, uh, baiting, anything like that, road hunting. Please call our uh, our hotline, our poaching hotline. And our Middle Tennessee hotline is 1-800-255-8972. And again, that's 1-800-255-8972. Um, so if, if you have any legal activity that you've seen or, or know of, please report it to us, and, and we'd be glad to help out. Um, also, uh, with, with baiting, um, that's, that's always an issue uh, every single year. Just as a reminder, um, you cannot hunt over bait uh, whatsoever. 
um, especially during the rifle season. The law says 250 yards and not direct line of sight. Well, with modern day firearms, 250 yards isn't anything. Uh, that's a, actually a very close range. Um, so just, again, err on the safe side and, and just don't do it. Now, if you want to bait for the purpose of viewing wildlife and you're not in possession of a weapon or anything like that, you're more than welcome to do so. If you like photography and things like that uh, and, and want to draw those animals in, that, that's good. But just uh, be mindful if, if you maybe have uh, other people hunting that property, um, they, it might present a hairy situation for them. So, um, again, just, just don't do it. Um, Checking in deer, the, the time period for that, I know a lot of people think that it's uh, a 24 hours from the time of kill or 48 hours. Uh, just to remind people that uh, it is actually that calendar day. So you've got to check it in the day that you harvest it. And it shouldn't be a problem because it, it starts getting dark now uh, around 5 o'clock. So that gives you seven hours um, to, to check that deer in, so that should never be a problem. But we, we do monitor that heavily since we've gone away with the physical kill tags on that animal. Um, so you've got to take it to a, a licensing uh, station and, and get it checked in there, or you can actually do it on your phone. Um, you can get our TWRA app, and it will ask you a, a number of questions, and you got to punch in the information, but you can get it checked in there right on your cell phone. Uh, so just use that resource. It's there for you to, to be convenient. But again, that's, that's that calendar day that you have to check it in. Um, that wraps up this month's edition of North Central Outdoors. Um, I hope everybody has a, a very productive deer season. And uh, I'll give you an update next time on kind of the, uh, the post deer season. And remember just to, to wear your orange, wear your harness, use a haul line if you're in a tree stand, and uh, be safe out there. Uh, good luck to you hunting, and we'll see you next time.